We are joined on the program by the Director of Research and Advocacy of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Vincent Mwadi. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Well, it's good news coming out from the World Bank report. Nigeria has moved up 24 places to 145th, the 145th position. Is this a true reflection of the state of things? Well, I think uh, the first thing is to first commend uh, all the stakeholders from the office of the PEBEC, even the vice president with all the executive orders over the last uh, few months, and to the operators and also ministries and departments for this uh, great news. Uh, from 169 to 145 is a great leap. And uh, you remember that government have set a target for themselves to move 20 points, you know, from where we are, 169 to uh, close to one. And uh, doing uh, 25, that's like uh, performing uh, fairly above, uh, above target. So it's a cheering news. And for the fact that this is a report from an independent uh, institution that we have a lesser influence on, I think uh, we should be able to rely on, on, the, on the reports. So uh, we at LCC join uh, other stakeholders to congratulate the federal government, congratulate operators and private sector for this, um, for this achievement. Okay. But we just started. You yeah, know, yes, a lot of indeed. things yes, still indeed. need to be touched. Yeah, because you know. many SMEs still complain of challenges, bottlenecks in the area of registering their businesses and all of that. 24 places up. Yeah. Why, why do we still have this, these see, challenges? If we have done the right thing, maybe we would have even moved 40 places up. What do you mean you by know, the right thing? Uh, yeah, a, a lot of the executive orders issued by the uh, vice president uh, was somehow resisted at the level of implementation, at the level of MDAs. You know, at the at operational level, you know, both uh, running the port in 24 hours, the badge or the um, uh, identification tag, these little, little things at the port. And that is a, a great indicator that is uh, moving across the border. You know, you talk about, about uh, ease of registering a new business. Yes, we've, uh, moved, we've we moved up and we've done fairly well, but we can still do better. But what I'm trying to say is that we have uh, tried by raising the agenda from just below the table to on top of the table. But now is the time to go back to work and fix those small and big things. Okay. Infrastructure remains a key challenge. Getting electricity, um, uh, power issue, logistics and transportation across the country for goods and services remain. Even court issue, settling disputes, minority interest, and getting credit. These are very big issue. Okay. But like I said, this is not a day to... Uh, uh, to become so bitter about it. This is a day for celebration, showing that if we continue in this momentum and go back down to work, uh, maybe by this okay, time... Okay, let me ask you on the final note, Dr. Mwadi. Um, you talked about resistance. When do you think, apart from infrastructure, when do you think all the government's efforts to loosen up the um, business environment, when do you think everything will kick into place and take effect with what we have on ground? Well, I will not be able to answer, but it looks like we still have a long way to go because what the FG have done is to look at the simple things and the easy things about bureaucracy, transparency, and whatever. But infrastructure, you can't fix it overnight, so it's difficult to define a time. I think it's still going to take us some time to deal with our, uh, our court processes, to deal with uh, access to infrastructure, to deal with access to credit. You know, but in terms of uh, bureaucracy and transparency and all of that, I think they are, they are, they are hands on it and also to make sure that the guys in the field monitoring and supervising and implementing are not resisting authorities that, we're see, that are coming from What kind of resistance? That word has come up over and over again <laughs> from you. You know, we have infrastructural challenges. Yeah. So with the manpower, with the guys in the field, what kind of resistance exactly are you making reference to? We are saying that in, uh, the VP or even the minister will announce for a reform. But you get to the operational level, it's not being obeyed. For instance, just to give a case because of time, the uh, port authority, sorry, the custom issued a directive that if you have cleared your goods out of the port, the highway unit of your, the trucks will have a, 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 a will scale through, you know. But up to two months after this directive or this executive order was issued, you still have uh, the custom checkpoint harassing, intimidating, collecting bribes from motorists and uh, and trucks. Across the country, this is just a okay, case. Okay, so we you have know, issues you, with institutions. It's an institutional e problem, exactly, as the case is. Exactly. We, the, the, there is an, a, um, a directive that only six uh, agencies should operate at the port. We still have up to 14 as we speak. You know, we want to see 20, 48 hours timeline for clearing goods and services and reducing the interface of human beings. 
but you still go online to do registration and then you are still asked to bring the form. You know, so re removing the interface and also imbibing the single window, whether it is on CAC processes, uh, port processes, and even court processes, that is introducing technology and innovation in our processes, we still have a long way to okay, go. Okay, so when you say reducing the interface, yeah. does it have to do with downsizing, embracing technology more, and then downsizing on um, in, the number of people? No, who work in this it's industry? embracing technology more because we've seen that as long as operators and business people are, are having physical interaction with these uh, officials from ministries and departments, the delay and bureaucracy and also demand for illegal fees and fines will continue to exist. All right, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Director of Research and Advocacy, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Vincent Mwandi. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Well, moving up now, the All Progressives Congress National Executive Council meeting begun in Abuja, the nation's capital, just a few minutes after 2 p.m. As soon as the president and the leader of the party, Mohamed Buhari, arrived the party national office in Abuja, the meeting began with the sign singing of the national anthem and the motion there to commence the Congress agenda was after, thereafter moved. The next meeting is coming after the party caucus meeting, which held at the presidential villa yesterday up until the early hours of Tuesday. The president, alongside other party leaders, the Senate president, governors and members of the National Working Committee, are in the meeting, which is the party's first in several months. The next meeting resolution is expected to determine the details of the party's national convention, which has not held in two years as stipulated in the party's constitution. Several issues are on the table, and the outcome of the meeting is expected to be revealed at the end, as the party had entered into a closed-door session. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, is at the APC national office covering the event. He joins us now to give updates. Hello, Larry. Thank you for joining us on the program. Well, thank you. Larry, could you, um, you could you talk us through what's happening right now? We understand that um, the party officials and the president ha have gone in for a closed-door meeting. What exactly is happening now? Uh, well, right now, uh, the meeting is on. At least we can tell you that uh, just uh, as a, the meeting was about to commence, um, journalists were told to leave the venue of the meeting which is unusual. The usual practice is for the prayers to be taken, the uh, national chairman to make a speech, the president, uh, who is the leader of the party, to make a speech, and then, you know, the press will be told to excuse them so that they can talk. That didn't happen here. Without any ceremony, press were told to work out of the meeting. Uh, right now, we believe a lot of things are being said which have to do with issues that were not on the table before. We do understand yesterday at the uh, caucus meeting uh, the issue of the, um, the rerun elections and other elections that are going on were to be discussed. We also understand the national um, registration of members, continuous registration, was to be discussed. We also understand that a lot of issues were to be discussed, but it appears that will not be what will be here. Sources are, are making us to understand that the uh, chairman, the national chairman, who's been under pressure for a while, that issue will be handled here. We're also expecting that they will be discussing the issue of the national convention, which hasn't held for a while. That should be discussed here. So a lot will be discussed, but we're told that after the meeting, they will get back to us to um, tell us what they want to tell us of what happened in that meeting.